Did you know that in the Bible, in the books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter, Peter talks about the spirits bound up in prison. Now we're going to read this, and then we're going to talk about how he knew. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Verse 19. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Check that out. And in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So in both of these passages, we have the concept of spirits being bound up in prison. But how did Peter know? He didn't say that the Lord told him. He didn't say, thus saith the Lord. He didn't say that God gave him a vision like he did in the book of Acts. Now suppose that I wrote a book, and in that book I write about the romantic story of Romeo and Juliet. I don't have to say, this is what I got from Shakespeare. I don't have to say that because most of you know that's from Shakespeare, obviously. But 2,000 years from now, let's say somebody finds that book, a lot of people would say, wow, boy, he, he, he's got some romantic story. He's very poetic, isn't he? You know, or maybe God showed him this. No, I mean, if you knew about the writings of Shakespeare and how the writings of Shakespeare is commonly known in my day, then you know that I got that from Shakespeare. In the same way, the Apostle Peter got this from a different book. A book that was commonly known in his day. A book that was in circulation in, in his day. And that is the book of Enoch. We know that it existed and that it was in circulation in his day because we found it in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which actually dates a few hundred years before even Peter was born. So let's look into the book of Enoch. This is Enoch chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. It says, And the Lord said to Michael, that's Michael the archangel, Go, inform Semyaza. Now, Semyaza is one of the leading evil angels. He would be like an arch evil angel. Go, inform Semyaza and the others with him who have associated with the women to corrupt themselves with them in all their uncleanness. When all their sons kill each other, and when they see the destruction of their loved ones, bind them for 70 generations. Now, it doesn't literally mean 70 generations here. Seven or 70 is like a number that means a long time. So in verse 12 here, it says to take the evil angels and bind them for 70 generations under the hills of the earth until the day of their judgment and of their consummation, until the judgment, which is for all eternity, is accomplished. And in those days, they will lead them to the abyss of fire, that is hell. In torment and in prison, they will be shut up for all eternity. Verse 14, and then Semyaza will be burnt, and from then on destroyed with them. Together they will be bound until the end of all generations. Now that is exactly what the apostle Peter was talking about in his epistles. But there's more. The book of Enoch, chapter 13, verse 1. And Enoch went and said to Azazel, Azazel is another evil archangel, You will not have peace. A severe sentence has come out against you, that you should be bound. There we got it. Be bound. Verse 2. And you will have neither rest nor mercy, nor the granting of any petitions. In other words, your prayers will not be answered. You're not going to get what you want. Because of the wrong which you have taught, and because all the works of blasphemy and wrong and sin which you have shown to the sons of men. So again, in that passage, it's talking about this evil archangel, this spirit being bound. Chapter 18, verse 14. And like a spirit questioning me, the angel said, This is the place of the end of heaven and earth, this is the prison for the stars of heaven and the hosts of heaven. 
Stars, according to the scriptures, symbolize angels. Remember when Jesus in the book of Revelation came with seven stars representing the seven angels? Let's read on, verse 15. And the stars which rule over the fire, these are the ones which transgressed the command of the Lord from the beginning of their rising, because they did not come out at their proper times. And he was angry with them and bound them. There we go again. Bound them until the time of the consummation of their sin in the year of mystery. And Uriel, that's one of the archangels of God, said to me, the spirits of angels who were promiscuous with women will stand here and they, assuming many forms, made men unclean and will lead men astray so that they sacrificed to demons as gods. And they will stand there until the great judgment day on which they will be judged so that an end will be made of them. And one more passage from the book of Enoch, chapter 21, verse 10. And he said to me, this place is the prison of the angels and there they will be held forever. So there you have it. The apostle Peter knew and believed about the spirits bound up in prison because he read and believed the book of Enoch.